الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وعزيزنا وكريمنا ورحيمنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأجمعه وأزواجه وعلينا معهم برحمتك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى عز وجل في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الدين بدأ غريبا سيعود كما بدأ فطوبى للغرباء وهم الذين يصلحون ما أفسد الناس من بعد من سنتي صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم the last time I think I sat in a community which was generally enriched with so many Bangladeshi people was in Bangladesh itself. I had the opportunity of visiting Silet and Dhaka. For I, was, I enjoyed my time in Bangladesh so much that I was there for two weeks. I extended my flight for an extra week. And I had a chance of touring around. One of the most hospitable places I've toured in my entire life. The topic they had given was a very interesting topic and a very imperative and important topic. Because it is a very well known fact that it is far more virtuous to abstain from evil and not do good deeds than do good deeds and not abstain from evil. It's easier to do good deeds. I tell you, Akhi, pray two rakat salah, takes two minutes. Say subhanallah, takes two minutes or two seconds. Read the root, you got it. I tell you, yo, it's Friday night. Lay off the club and in the party. And you're like, oh brother, inshallah. We'll try. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Mona Mikal Sahib is here who studied more extensively under Shaykh Fadl Rahman Aadami. I only had the chance of dabbling or attending his courses a couple of times. He said, Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah. O you who believe, have taqwa. Right? We, that's the purpose, to have taqwa. That's what we're supposed to get. Then Allah says, Kunu ma'as sadiqeen. He says, have taqwa, but be with the righteous. When people ask me, you know, I had my child, and you know, I, we gave him such a good upbringing and uh, we always told him to do good. We always told him to pray. We always told him, you know, to abstain from sins. And now, now all of a sudden, he's the dawn of hillside. What went wrong? What went wrong? Everyone will tell you the same thing. He got caught up with the wrong crew. He got caught up with the wrong crew. Miguel de Cervantes, has anyone heard of him? Mufti Zaid? No? He's not a Sahabi, Miguel. There's no Sahabi by the name of Miguel. Mikael, maybe not Miguel. De Cervantes, philosopher. He says, Tell me thy friends, and I shall tell thee who thou art. Tell me your friends, 
and I'll tell you who you are. Any time the youth go and they can't get up, how many times, raise your hand, if either yourself or you know somebody has had that moment in your life, that epiphany moment, when you're like, man, it's enough is enough. You know, I've, I've done enough sins in my life, I've done enough wrong things in my life. I'm sorry, I sound, I sound very tired. I just came from Connecticut. I spoke there and I drove straight from Connecticut. And you know, you gotta dress up like this and walk in the cold. It's too much work. How many times have you had that feeling by a show of hands? Raise your hand. Where you're in this dark moment in life and you're all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I wanna get better. You know what, I wanna leave everything. I wanna stop, don't be shy, raise your hand. Only these many people, that's it. I got like a couple of little kids raising their hands. Like six years, you got a lot of dark moments, buddy. <laughs> what always held you down? What always kept you away? That group me message. That WhatsApp message. That Snapchat. Yo, what's the plan for tonight? What's good? And this is what corrupts us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran when he says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah. To have taqwa, it's easy. To, to distance yourself and say, well, you know what? I have a realization and I want to get closer to my creator. That's easy. Then Allah says, you want to maintain it? Kunu ma'as-sadiqeen. Stay with the righteous. You want to know how to save yourself from sin? It's common sense. Stay with those who don't sin. If you want to become a basketball player, you want to be good at ball, you want to get good handles, what do you do? You don't chill with basketball players. You go to the court. You watch people, you watch clips. I had one friend who's, he's, he balls all the time. What are you doing? Yo, I'm watching YouTube clips. And I'm just mind blown. Like, you just watch these all days? Yeah, man, I'm trying to learn new moves. Okay, what do you do in your free time? I'm always at the court. I'm always shooting around, trying to practice a new trick. Uh, 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 a new trick. Same way over here. You want to get better? Surround yourself around a basketball team of righteous people. Whose goal is to shoot towards Jannah. Whose goal is to shoot towards Jannah. And that's what they're aiming for, towards. Marna Saab said a very beautiful story in Surah Kahf. I had the opportunity of visiting the cave of uh, the seven sleepers in Jordan. I went there, alhamdulillah. We got there very late, uh, around 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. and 12 a.m. at night. And uh, we didn't have a hotel that night, so I was with my friend. So he was like, hey, yo, you want to do a sunnah? I said, what sunnah? He said, let's sleep with the people of the cave. <laughs> so anyway, we went there, you know, I, I visited that place twice. So when we got there, there were eight graves there. So I said, maybe seven for the people and one for the dog. Allah mentions a dog. You know, if I call you, I'm like, hey, yo, you're a dog. What are you going to say? I mean, I don't know. You guys are from Queens. You always say, hey, old dog, was good? And I don't know about... But in general, if you call somebody a dog, they get offended. Right? Yo, you don't call me a dog, you know? Dog is a bad thing to say to somebody. But out of all the things Allah says, Allah says there were seven people, there was a dog too there. His name was Qitmir, according to some narrations. So if you have a hunting dog or something, you can call him Qitmir. Why mention the dog? Because he had the suhbah of these righteous people. That just the way the seven, pe the seven kids, who were the, they were young chaps just like you guys. Children of viziers. The, the king at that time was Daqiyanus. They were young kids, they were good looking, they had money. Uh, they were, you know, what you could say in their prime age. Imagine you guys, you know how you guys have Ferraris and Bugattis and Mas Maseratis? They had like really chiseled horses. Like white horses, you know, really with the, the forearms protruding. Strong horses and all the, you know, all the village girls liked them, wanted to get to know them, wanted them to send a pigeon with their address or however they connected with each other in those days. These kids said, no, we have, we have a higher cause. I can party with this chick, I can chill with her for a little bit, but it's going to come to an end. You know, you know, kids tell me all the time, I was with, a kid, I was with some kids, I hope they're not watching the live stream. Is this live streams? I'm sorry if you know who I'm talking about. He's a friend of mine. He, mess, he met me last night. He was like, hey, you know, I'm Mufsab, I got a thing. I'm trying to marry this girl. I was like, you know, and she's the perfect Muslim wife I was looking for. And I was like, how old are you, man? He's like 20. 
And I was like, how long have you known her for? He's like, five months, but I'm telling you. I've been dreaming about her from as long as I can. She's got that hijab. You know that hijab? And I was like, all right, whatever, man. You feel like, you know what? I know this girl and that's it. I like her. I want to be with her. There ain't going to be no other. Right? People say that all the time. I like this girl. That's it, man. There ain't going to be no other. That's it. I'm going to be with her the whole life. What happens after six, eight months? There's another. What happens after 10 months after that? There's another. You know, when you were growing up as a kid, you said, you told your mom and dad, you know, the, the uncles here, they know. But, but I swear, that's all I, I, only the thing I want in my life is a Game Boy. That's all I want. You promise you don't want anything else? No, that's all I want. Game Boy comes, I need the Pokemon Sapphire. You, you promise, I, I know, this is, this is it. Xbox comes out. I need the Xbox, you just the Game Boy. I know, but Game Boy, nobody plays Game Boy anymore. Come on, Game Boy? Our Xbox, as every year, two years go on, no, no, I need this, I need the new thing. Our desires always change. But when you have your goal on Jannah, and you have your goal on Akhirah, that desire doesn't change. That hur will always be more beautiful than you can ever think of. That's not gonna change. That's never gonna, you know, there was a guy who was with his wife, and she said, you know what? Uh, honey, if you die, I'm gonna go, and uh, I'm never gonna remarry. I'm going to go and live with my sister, and I'm going to spend my entire life over there. She said, but you're a guy. I know how you guys are. He said, hey, what do you mean? He's like, you know, when, when I die, you're going to get married again. He's like, no. She's like, yeah, you are. He's like, look, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm never going to get married again. I'm just going to move in with your sister. <laughs> right? People always, they're, they're a desire. You say, no, no, that's it. I'm not going to want anything more. No. Something else pops up, oh, he looks more beautiful. The wife never looks beautiful, her sister always looks better. The girl never looks nice, her friends look nicer now. This is the real, real talk, real. Real talk, we can hide this, we can hide the facts, but let me hit it real to you. We are fixated on things that will change, that will decrease. Jalaluddin Rumi, a phenomenal mystic who wrote the Mathnawi. Uh, I, I, had the, I, had, I had the opportunity of flipping through some of the pages. I was in Istanbul a couple of months ago. I really wanted to visit Kanya uh, and see uh, the, the area where Jalaluddin Rumi uh, grew up, but never had the opportunity. Inshallah, next time. He writes in his Mathnawi, a hypothetical story. So don't think of it like, you know, it's something that uh, actually took place. It's a hypothetical story. And they do these things to drive a point across. He said there was this guy, right? Mashallah, he, run the, he ran this like scholarly place where people got there and they got better, you know? Like a spiritual retreat. So this brother comes there to get good. And then, you know, he had brothers and girls there as well. So there was this sister, you know? Her responsibility, you know, she had no other parents, no one else. Her job was to serve the food. So this brother comes, mashallah, to get his, spirit, his heart spiritually cleansed. But when he sees that sister, his heart gets spiritually attached to that sister. And every single time she's bringing the food and he's like, Jazakallah, sister. And she's also there to get better. So she's like, Astaghfirullah. You know, she akhi zoned him. You know what akhi zoned is? It's one step past friend zoned. If you're a friend zoned, 10 years later, you can still, there's still a chance. If she calls you akhi, bro, done. It's, it's not happening. Get the hint. So she's like, no, 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 you know, it's, it's. He says, okay, whatever. You know, a couple of days went by, he's, he keeps on checking her out. You know, oh, can I get one more, right, one more spoon right up, please? Mishti? I learned like five words of uh, Bengali when I was there. And I used to use Urdu throughout the whole thing. But, um, so she gets upset. You know, she goes and tells the teacher. She says, you know what, Sheikh, you need to expel this kid. This guy didn't come to get spiritually better. He's hitting on me. And he's like, all right, you know what? We're going to solve the situation. So what are you going to do? And he's like, I got this magical pill. <laughs> he wrote the story, man, not me. He says, you're going to take this pill. This is going to make you constantly use the bathroom. You're going to have diarrhea constantly. Okay? He's like, and anything you eat won't be able to stay in your stomach. She says, okay. What happens when a person has, is constantly having diarrhea? They get what? They get weak. They get sick. Their face starts sinking in. 
So now this girl, she's, whatever she's eating, she's, it's not staying in. And her, her hair is getting wispy. And her skin is deteriorating. And, she's, and he says, whenever you, like I said, I didn't write the story. The guy did. He said, whenever you use the bathroom, obviously it's back in the day, they didn't have flushes. He's like, keep it in one area. So she said, okay, that's what she would do. After a couple of weeks, this guy starts seeing the same girl who looked like Miss Kanya. And all of a sudden, she's looking like she got slapped in the face with Kanya. Right? Not Kanya West. Kanya is a place's name. Just in case somebody's like, who's Kanya? So this guy now, he obviously starts seeing, when that beauty starts seeing these materialistic things, materialistic things, he starts seeing these things start diminishing, he stops looking at her. You know? Would you like more right No. Another plate? No, I'm good. You just leave it over there. She goes back, she's like, Sheikh, now he's not even looking at me anymore. You know, girls, they want attention. Sometimes, you know, sometimes girls need that attention. You know? But, hey, wait, wait, why is he looking at me? Why, why isn't he looking at me? You know, it's both times dilemma. She goes back to the sheikh, she says, Sheikh, you know, now he's not even looking at me, what's going on? He says, I want you to take that pail and bring it. So she brought it. And the sheikh tells the kid, he says, you see this girl? The girl never changed. This girl, she never changed. But when this feces and this excrement was inside her, you loved her. When it exited her, you stopped loving her. In reality, you were in love with this. Think about it. It's, it's a joke, it's a funny story, whatever. But it's a deep story. Jalaluddin Rumi was no joke. Think about it. This, he said, your love is, your attachment is with this. When it was in her, you were heads over heels over her. And when it left her, you could, didn't even look at her. Allah says in the Quran, Azwajum mutahara. He says, the women of Jannah mutahara. They are pure. No feces, no snot. No mucus. No back talking, you know. I was telling a story today in Connecticut. I said, you know, when people get newly married, first year, first three, four months, five months, you know, the guy's a complete prick. And, you know, he's like, uh, hey, the salt is too less. She's like, oh, you know, it's the first two, three months. You know, they're, everybody's sweet. She's like, oh, okay, you know, I'll, tr I'll try harder next time. He's all right, you know, four or five years down the marriage. He says, oh, you know what, the salt, it's, uh, it's just quite a lot. She says, oh, you know what? I'm never cooking this dish again, all right? 20, 30 years down the road in the marriage, you know, when the marriage gets pretty old, he says, hey, you know, the salt is too much today. Yeah, next time I'm gonna call you to put the salt inside. Right? These things, we're fixated over these things that are materialistic, they change. But let me tell you something. Allah has kept something far greater for you. Allah has kept something far greater than you, far greater for you in the storage. Something, I, I was telling my students in, in Rutgers University, I said, you wanna know what Jannah is? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described it in the best words. مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ أَحَدِكُمْ That you want to know Jannah? Think about it. Think about the most beautiful place. Whether it's LeBron's mansion or Shaq's mansion. Think about the most beautiful place you know. You thought, you thought about it? That's where Jannah begins one step after that. Wherever you can think of, all of us can think of. Jannah begins one step after that. Begins where it ends, only Allah knows. Where it ends, only Allah knows. It's easy to do good deeds. To stay away from sins is the hard part. Surround yourself around good company. Surround yourself. I'm not telling you, all of you guys should start, mashallah, go to the corner of the masjid and grab a bunch of tasbihs and seclude yourselves from, from the entire world. No. You, Allah created you for a different reason. Allah said, He told the angels, I created a different nation. They said, Ya Allah, نحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك. Oh my Allah. They felt bad. It wasn't they weren't questioning the Almighty. They weren't questioning Him. They said, Ya Allah, are we not worshipping you enough? Is there something wrong in our worship? نحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك. We him thy glory. Is there something that we haven't done properly? Allah says, no. I want a different nation. I want a different group of people. Sometimes they forget, sometimes they remember. Sometimes they're busy in their own world. Sometimes they remember me. I was thinking the other day, there is no religion in the world. No religion. Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, uh, Taoism, Buddhism, any other isms there are there. There is no religion in the world that 
that requires its followers to remember its creator more than Islam. Wake up in the morning, think about me. Commit a sin, at Zohar, you have to come and meet me again. You're, you're not honest in your transactions, you have to talk to me. Usr time comes, you're closing the store. Are you gonna try to pocket some money? You're gonna come out and have to talk to me. Sunset comes, you're going to your house. How are you with your wives and children? Maghrib, you're gonna have to talk to me about it. Later on, when you're going to sleep at the darkness of the night, what are you about to do? Isha, come and speak to me first. Revolved around, constantly. Allah tells you, I'm here, I'm here for you. يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Don't despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This mercy is for you. رَبُّ الرَّحِيمُ سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Our teacher, Mawana Sister Truxi Sahib, حَفِذَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَعَاهُ He used to say something very beautiful. He says, Allah gives you time and respite. He says, سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ you know, you're, Anybody where I'm fishing? Right here, only you? You're like, yeah, right here, I got a pond in my backyard. <laughs> I do this. I do this all the time. Huh, him? You, I went to Bangladesh and literally everybody had their little pond in the backyard. I'm serious. In Silet, at least they did. And you know, I, I witnessed. And then in the morning, I woke up one morning, and two people, two families were fighting over how much percentage of the fish they owned in that pond. I don't. I'm not lying. I, I have a video to prove it. I don't know if there's Bengali swear words in there or not, so I, I don't put the volume up. Anyway, when you fish, what, what do you do? You reel it out, right? You, you, you put the bait. The fish comes and nibbles a little bit. You get a little sprite. Pull it up. Yank it a little bit. Nibbles. You know? Give it a little bit of time. Give it a little yank. One, two yanks. And then, before it knows what happens, you pull it up. Allah says, Take your time. We're, 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 the real is in the dunya. Surround it, don't worry. I'll give you a couple of couple of times in your life you'll get those bumps and when when the time is up before you know it Allah takes you and there's nothing you can do ya sa ya waqifa ala qabri la tata'ajjab an amri kuntu mithlak bil amsi wa ghadan takunu mithli the arabic poet says o person standing at the grave la tata'ajjab an amri don't be surprised you know when somebody dies what does everybody say i was just with him I was just with him. Just yesterday we were together. We were just chilling. Or you know, we made plans for next week. We were about to go to a dawah together. And then what happens? All of a sudden he passed away. So the person, it's a hypothetical situation. He says, oh person standing at the grave. Don't be shocked. That oh, how did he pass away so quick? Kuntu mithlak bil amsi. Yesterday I was just like you. Wandering the earth. No fear in the world. Nobody can touch me. Ghadan takunu mithli. Tomorrow you'll be like me under the ground, helpless. Imam Ahmad bin Hamla rahimahullah said a more, most profound poem. One of the most profound poems. He says, Adhanul mar'i hina tiflu yati. Adhanul mar'i hina tiflu yati. Wa ta'khiru salati ila al-mamati. Dalilun anna mahyahu yasirun. Kama bayna al-adhani ila salati When a child is born, what do you do? I'm tired, man. You guys got to start talking now. Call the adhan. And iqama. When a child is born, you call the adhan in his right ear and you call the iqama in the left ear. What happens when you do adhan and iqama? Salah. Do you pray? No? How do you guys know? None of you guys had kids. Most of you guys didn't have kids. Yes. You don't pray salah. When a person dies, what do you do? Is there a adhan qama before it? Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal says, Adhanul mar'i hina tiflu yati. When that child is born, the adhan and the iqama is given. What ta'khiru salati ila al mamati. That salah is delayed. When? Till his death. Dalilun. It's a proof. Anna mahyahu yasirun. His life is short. كَمَا بَيْنَ الْآذَانِ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ The amount of times it takes between iqama and salah, that's how your life is. Before you know it, it's gone. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, before you know it, it's gone. What do we have to take in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These sins that we abstain from, is difficult. We all know we make mistakes. But tawbah, the beauty of the word tawbah, ta'ib, it means to come back over and over again. 
Allah says, you make that mistake, come back to me, I'll forgive it again. You come back, wallahi, you know people come and praise, but whether it's myself, you know, we wear these beautiful things to hide our ugly insides. Whether it's ourselves, someone once came and said, you know what, they started praising, you know, this is what humans do. We, we aspire the praise of other people. Once one sahabi told another sahabi that, you know, I woke up in the morning and, uh, you know, when I woke up, I saw a dream. And in the dream, I saw you in Jannah. If it was you and I, what would we say? Brother, I know about this. You dreaming about Jannah, I'm living it. You're not the first one to tell me this, you know that? Kiss the hand. So, I told the brother, he started praising, and I said, you know what? It's not me that you're praising. It's the curtain of satariyat, and the curtain that satar, Allah, has placed over my sins that you see, that attracts you, and that's what you're praising, you're not praising me. If our realities were known to our mothers, they would forsake us. If our realities were known to our mothers, they would forsake us. It is only our Allah who lets you, gives you respite. The fact that you're sitting here today shows how much Allah loves you. Beyond your sins, if we, if we were in that same position, we would, never be, we would never allow those who disobey us over and over again. Someone asked a question last night. They said, I have a friend who continuously lies. What should I do? Right? When someone keeps on lying, you know, ditching you, you say, yo, he's not a real, he's not, he's not my day one guy. He's not my day one homeboy, you know? So he's not a real guy. I, I want my real friends, right? Because these guys are not honest. Are we real people to Allah? Kullu bani Adam khatta'un. Allah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all of you make sins, it's fine. Wa khayru khatta'in at tawabun. But the best amongst you are those who do tawbah. Going back to the original point, suhbah. These masjids, they look like four walls, they look like they're nothing. But coming inside, you're like you're in a mother's womb. Being nurtured and away from any type of harm. When we were in Dar al Ulum, I had a friend, I was telling him, I said, maybe that is the only time in our life that we can take in front of Allah and say, Ya Allah, this was the best time of our life where we didn't sin. Coming inside places, houses of worship, sitting there, reflecting, detaching yourself, surrounding yourself with good people. The hadith of Thumama bin Uthal comes to mind. He was a man who killed many Sahaba. He was wanted. You know, you have that most wanted list, FBI most wanted. He was Medina's most wanted list. He was the leader of Yamama. Sahaba caught him. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what did you do? They tied him up to the, to the pole in the masjid. They had a couple of uh, columns, pillars in the masjid that tied him up. Thumama was his name, Thumama bin Uthal. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes. Says, Ma baluka ya Thumama. Thumama, what's up? Who's the organizer of this event? You are? What's after my uh, program? What time is Isha Salah? 7.30 is Isha Salah? So Adan's at 7.15. Okay. You know, we have to be very specific on time. The sheikhs, when it comes to a mic, it's very difficult for us to let go. There's a common story that I, that I say when it, whenever it comes about time. I tell them that there was one scholar, he was giving a, mashallah, a very nice lecture. And you know, slowly, slowly, everybody was like, all right, let's, let's be out. There's one brother left. And he just kept on going and going and going. And he said, mashallah, at the end of the speech, he said, brother, you, you the real MVP. You got that real iman. You know, he's like, you stayed the whole bayad? Yo, that's what's up. He said, no, man, the mic was mine. <laughs> I was waiting for you to stop, bro. Thumama bin Uthal ties him up. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa comes and says, ma baluka ya Thumama. You know, in our, in our lingo, in slang, what's up, Thumama? How's it going? In taqtul taqtul tadamin. وَإِن تُنْعِمْ تُنْعِمْ عَلَىٰ شَاكِرٍ وَإِن تُرِدْ مَالًا فَاسْأَلْ تُعْطَ مِنْهُ مَا شِئْتِ He says, Muhammad, if you want to kill me, تَقْتُلْ تَقْتُلْ دَا دَمِنْ I deserve to be killed. I deserve to be 
killed. I killed your people. Or another interpretation is, I'm a man of a high lineage. You want money? Ask. Ransom me off. But if you forgive me, I'll remember this till the day I die. The Prophet ﷺ said, no problem. Let him stay. 24 hours in Majd al-Nabawi. Next day, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes. Ma baluka ya Thumama. What's up, Thumama? What's going on? Now he realized if the Prophet wanted to kill him, he would have killed him the first day. This thing blocked my vision. He said, he realized he's not going to kill me. So he said, In tun'im tun'im ala shakirin. You forgive me, I'll remember it. And if you kill me, I deserve to be killed. You want money? Ask, I'll give it to you. It's okay. One 20, another 24 hours in Majd al-Nabawi. Third day. What's popping? What's good? Same story, different day. In taqtul taqtul da'adamin wa in tun'im tun'im ala shakirin. وَإِن تُرِدْ مَالًا فَاسْأَلْ تُعْطَ مِنْهُ مَا شِئْتْ He said, okay. So mama, go. Three days he spent in Majd al-Nabawi. Three days he spent in the Majd of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Observing. Just being around that area. Comes out, leaves, freed man. After a little bit, Thumama bin Uthal comes back to the Majd of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With water dripping from his beard and water dripping from his hand, he left at he left as Thumama and he returned and said, "Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah." And he became a radiyallahu taala anhu. He said, "Ya Muhammad, wallahi ma kan ala sathi al ard aw ala wajh al ard." بلد أبغض إلي من بلدك ولا دين أبغض إلي من دينك ولا وجه أبغض إلي من وجهك والآن ما كان على وجه الأرض دين أحب إلي من دينك ولا بلد أحب إلي من بلدك ولا وجه أحب إلي من وجهك He said Muhammad Arabi three days spending in your masjid before I came here there was no city I hated more than Medina. There was no religion I detested more than Islam. And there was no face I abhorred more than your face. But now, wallahi, there, there exists no land more beautiful to me than Medina Munawwara. There lives no land more beloved to me then Madina Munawwara, Mera dil tadap raha hai, Mera jal raha hai seena. Mera dil tadap raha hai, Mera jal raha hai seena. Ke dawa wahi milegi, Mujhe le chalo Madina. Mein mariz Mustafa hoon, Mein mariz Mustafa hoon, Mujhe chedo na tabibo, Mujhe bas le chalo Madina. The poet says, I'm sick. I have a sickness. The sickness is, I'm, in, I, I'm infatuated with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The cure, you can't, no doctor come near me. No cure can be granted to me by any doctor. My cure is to go to Medina Munawwara. He says, I, ha I despised every land, but now Medina is the most beloved land by me. I hated every religion, and now Islam is the most beloved religion to me. I hated every, fa I, there was no face more detestable to me than your face, but now your face is the most beloved face that my eyes have ever set upon. If Thumama bin Urthal can be changed, spending three days in the house of Allah, uh, the house of Allah in the Majid, he can say three days. Are me and you worse enemies than Thumama was before he accepted Islam? What has happened to us? We hear the Quran and it doesn't affect our hearts. We sit in speeches, it's candy for the ears and not food for thought. What happened to us? Allah says in the Quran, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ He said, if I took this Quran and I revealed it on the mountain, you seen anyone ever seen a mountain around here? 
And someone said, you know what, I read the Quran in its original text, it has no effect on me. You know, I, I don't feel spiritual. So a person said, take this bucket. And they had a hole in it. And it was a dirty bucket. And he said, I want you to go get water and bring the water back. Every day from the well. So the guy said, buddy, the bucket is first of all dirty. No one's going to drink the water that's in this bucket. And second of all, uh, there's a hole in the bucket. Generally, law of gravity, there's a hole in the bucket. The water's going to go on the floor. He's like, yo, just do what you're told. Okay, he goes every day, would go get, fill up the water, come back. And as he would be walking, water would drop. And by the time he got to the house, there would be no water in the bucket. He said, I told you. He said, keep on doing it. One week, two weeks, three weeks, a month went by. He said, yo, I'm done with this. One month has gone by. I fill up water every day, I bring it back. No water remains inside. What's the benefit of me constantly going and getting water when nothing remains? I'm not doing this shenanigans over and over again. So he said, he, so the person replied, he said, you're right. No water remained in that bucket. But look inside the bucket. He said, why? There's no water. He said, look inside the bucket. When he looked inside, he said, that bucket was a filthy, dirty bucket. But constantly that water going through it, it made it clean. And this is the state of our hearts. They're filthy in it. And they're dirty. But the constant recitation of the Quran will chisel it. If non-Muslims can hear it and cry, and non-Muslims can be affected by it, you and I can be affected. But Allah says, I did not create two hearts for anyone else. Your heart can be attached to one thing. If it is attached to Allah and it wants to go towards purity, you need to leave those things that diminish it and that, that, that tarnish it. You can't listen to Quran and hope for the love of the Quran to enter in your heart when you're hearing Jay-Z or Eminem and Kanye F and B in your ear. You're so used to hearing about sexual things or about girls and drugs and then you come and you read the Quran and say, why don't I feel anything? That is because your heart already lo loves something else. Detach yourself from music for one month, read the Quran and wallahi the Quran will touch you. Detach yourself. Leave those friends that are pulling you down. People say, yo, we ride or die together. We ride and die together. No, ain't nobody ride and die together. Everyone changes, everyone forgets everyone. These friends, if they're, you know, they say, I'll take a bullet for my friend. Yo, yo, we, me and him, we're day one guys. Yo, I'll take a bullet for him. No, in reality, if that friend is bad for you, you're not taking the bullet for him. He's the one shooting you with the bullet. He's shooting you down. He's keeping you down. He's not letting you reach your creator. The Sahaba had one goal. They had one goal when the Persians and the Romans had asked them, what is your mission? And I will end off with this because it's approaching Salah time. They said we had one goal and one mission. لِنُخْرِجَ ibad مِنْ عِبَادَةِ ibad إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ ibad. Our job is to take mankind out of the slavery of mankind and put it in the slavery of the Lord of mankind. But in order for that to occur, change your crowd. Spend time in the masjid. It will do wonders. It will, it, nothing happens in one or two days. Musa salam spoke to Allah, Kalimullah. Him and Allah, they want that direct call. They want that straight. You know, no, 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 no operator in between. It was just him and Allah. And he did dua to Allah. You have your Musa. You're Ulul Azam. You're one of the greatest prophets. You've been, you know, you're, 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 you're Kalimullah. You talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, how many du'as can you ask? You ask a couple of du'as. He says, Ya Allah, Fir'aun is a nuisance. This guy is tripping. You got to take care of him. Allah says, Qad ya Musa. He says, Musa, your du'a has been accepted. Imagine the scenario. Musa is doing du'a. To who? To Allah. No person in between. No hijab in between. And his talk is direct with Allah. He's got a handful of du'as to do. And he asks and he beseeches Allah. And Allah says, Oh Musa, qad utid. And he's hearing the reply from Allah. We do du'a but we don't hear Allah's reply. He hears the reply from Allah. Allah says, qad utid su'laka ya Musa. Musa, your du'a I have accepted. My Ustad Mona Choksi Sahib used to say, that wallahi, this was Musa Kalimullah doing du'a. Allah guaranteed his du'a being accepted. But it, the, in reality, the actual du'a took place and, and it, uh, it materialized 40 years later. 40 years later. 
we want that our hands go up and before they go down we either become the greatest mystic of all time or that you know all of our deeds and everything that we want come together it's a test to test our faith and their challenge is not going to be easy but there will be nothing you have the opportunities that friday saturday night that girl hits you up and you say yo tonight i'm not going to pop those pills and i'm not going to go party tonight and i'm not going to do these things instead i'm going to connect myself with allah imagine going to sleep and seeing in your dream you for, you left that girl on the side but imagine going to sleep and seeing in your dream the blessed face of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell me if it was worth it or not tell me if it was worth it or not may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you and i all the tawfiq to stay away from sins my ears are closer to my mouth than anyone else's ears May Allah give us all the tawfiq. If anything I've said wrong, uh, I'm not a feminist or sexist or something. I just make jokes to uh, keep the crowd light because I myself, I'm extremely tired. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa give one and all the tawfiq to act upon what has been said. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'idil muslimin wal muslimat fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafoorur rahim.